All right, we're going to start where we left off. I completed the data table here, um, as you can see, and changed a few numbers just to give us a little bit more with the standard deviation. So what we wanna to do today is talk a little bit about how to calculate a standard deviation. We already did the averages and then how to graph. So first for the standard deviation, what you're going to want to do is we're going to put a formula in here that's gonna allow us to um, just put in the standard deviation of what we're going to need. So the standard deviation is how far from the average are you, right, of each one of these data points. So for each one of these points, how far is each one of these from that average? Sorry about that. So if we go into here, we can just type in a formula I'm not sure why that keeps popping up. Go back to our formulas here, right? So for this one, the standard deviation, we begin with an equal sign to tell it that we want a formula. The standard deviation formula is STDEV. And then we need to tell it what cells we want to find the standard deviation of, which would just be these three. Close that parentheses, hit enter. And that means that the average of each one of these deviations from 1.38 is 0.56. We're gonna drag that down to get all the standard deviations. Notice when the numbers are really close to one another, your standard deviation should be very low. So that's what we want, right? We want a low standard deviation. Numbers in which you have a major outlier, like right here, the 7.7 .7 compared to 9, 9.2, you're gonna have a very high standard deviation. Again, these numbers are just kind of fabricated in order for the demonstration of, of what we wanna do here, which is to learn how to create a graph and see these standard deviations. So normally we would go back and recheck that. That's a big difference between those. Given the values of these numbers, that's a really high standard deviation considering that these numbers are only at a value of nine. So that's almost, uh, you know, that's a high percentage to be in the standard deviation. So how do we graph this? So the number one thing here is taking a look at the graph. So the one thing you can do when you want to graph is you want to highlight the data that you need to graph. So for us, we're going to graph distance. Go back to wrap that text. Distance and average time is what we want on our graph. So I'm gonna highlight this column, hold down the control and highlight this column as well. The first column that is always highlighted is always on your X axis. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna choose one of these graphs. We always choose a scatter plot in physics. We want this down arrow and we get a choice of many scatter plots. We're gonna want the smooth curve, which is this choice right here. And if I click on that, you will notice the data goes from zero to about 10, which fits my x-axis of one to nine. This data goes from zero to 14, 15, 16, which is these numbers. So always check to make sure your axes are what you want them to be. You can see here that it's a very generic chart for right now. We have to add titles on the axes along with units. So to do that, you're gonna hit this. To add your chart elements, you can also go up here and add chart elements here. So we're gonna add our chart elements with the axis titles and our chart title. So the Y axis title is going to be and with that box highlighted. You can just start um, typing that in. And this should say average time in units of seconds. So don't forget your units. And then down here on the x-axis, this is going to be distance in units of meters. The title should match the title of our chart up here. This is going to be the speed of a toy car. Now, if this were in a lab, we would call this table, right? We would put in a table and this one would be our graph. So for us, we're gonna use Excel to make these, and then you can go back and you can just copy this entire chart and put it into your Word document to be able to submit for your lab. So that's a quick, easy way to create your graph. There are often many things that we wanna to add to this. So just a couple of things, if I'm in this chart, 
I can move that around within my chart, right? Notice what's moving there. If I wanna make my chart bigger or smaller, I can go like that and just drag these arrows. I can move this within my spreadsheet all around like that um, and so on. For today, we wanna to put in these error bars for our standard deviation. We wanna add those. Depending on your values, you might have a standard deviation for your measurement horizontally, which in this case, your standard deviation would be your instrumental limit of error which would be one half the smallest unit of measurement that we could make. So on this chart, our standard deviation in the horizontal direction would be half of a millimeter. And if this is in meters, then that would be 0 0.0005, right? So half of a millimeter. A millimeter would be 0 0.0001, right? So 10 to the negative three, and then half of that would be 0 0.0005. On this chart, that's not gonna show up at all. So we're gonna go ahead and put our horizontal standard of error, standard deviation as being zero. And our vertical, we want to be the standard deviation here of what we have on our average. So again, distance would have a standard deviation of the instrumental limit of error, which would be plus minus, Point zero 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 five or half a millimeter to be very, very little, right? This is the average standard deviation. Well, not really the average, that is your standard deviation. If you took the average, that's what you would do here. So for us, we want to add these error bars. Right? So a couple things that we want to add, we can go to error bars. When you click on that and you click more option, it appears like it automatically puts error bars in. I'm gonna to go to this chart, which gets me to my error bars. I'm gonna come down here and hit custom. Okay. And then I wanna specify the value. Notice I'm in the vertical error bars. So I wanna specify the value that I wanna use. It says, what's your positive? So remember, this is a plus or minus. So my positive values should be all of these, right? And then I'm gonna hit my negative values and they should be all of these as well. Hit okay, so you're gonna highlight that to be a plus or minus values, and that's what we see here. We're gonna get rid of our horizontal ones. I'm gonna come over here and say horizontal and let them be a fixed value. And in this case, it should be 0 0.0005, which is gonna pretty much show up as nothing. So now you can see the vertical error bars. They're very, very small because these are very, very small. Right here, notice this one is large at six, right? That's our largest error bar showing a plus or minus on those error bars. If I make the error, if I go in and I just make an error um, bar that's much higher, 1.0, right? Notice how much bigger that got. So when it comes to these error bars, usually they're a little bit larger. Again, I fixed this data to make it look, um, you know, along this straight line is what we wanted. So that error bar, what we want is that the line that we were to draw through here, if I were to come in and let me go ahead and just make up, make these a little bit larger so that they show up more. So I'm going to put bigger error bars in here. Um, So I'm fixing our error bar. You should not do this. I'm just doing it for the sake of our demonstration here. 1.2. So you can see how that changed our error bars, right? So what we want is when we do get a trend line is does the line fit all within the error bars? What I mean by trend line is we can now add that on our chart. So here I can choose a trend line. I'm going to choose a specific type of trend line. And typically, we want to go with a linear, right? So you can see underneath here, this dotted line does stay within this error bar. It comes below on this error bar and so on. So our trend line, if we were to put it in there, does meet the data that we collected within the error bars that I made up here. Now, if I go back to my original standard deviation, that might not fit in there. 
Another thing that's nice to do is as I do the trend line, um, let's see, I do the trend line options, right? I can display my equation. So just so you see that, so I clicked here and these are my trend lines. I choose a linear and I can set my equation. I can choose the intercept to be a zero, zero. I didn't do that on here. We can certainly do that and notice that it changes your equation slightly, right? Because you force it to go through zero. But very often we wanna add this trend line and the equation that goes with it. So there's our equation that fits this horizontal trend line, right? And I can see that it's in within my error bars. So these are basic understandings of how to create a graph with a data table using some data analysis. Some measurements are using the instrumental limit of error, and that would be your fixed error bars. Other error bars will be your standard deviation. For that, you want to go through and do the custom error bars, right? So remember that we went in here and you were able to choose custom error bars. You have to go to here, custom, and specify the value that you want. All right, that's your basic understanding of graphing in Excel.